Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a new product announcement video for this 1.6 scale M40A1 recoilless rifle kit. The model itself is a brand new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line and is one that has been in research and development in secrecy for the last couple months. With the model's release being about two weeks away, this is a perfect time to announce the product as well as go over its features and functions in this video. This model here is comprised of mostly 3D printed parts. There are no cast resin pieces that are found on this model. Now it's also important to point out that the model in this video is that of the prototype. The production units will be slightly more improved compared to the unit found in this video. However, the details and as well as the functions are going to be almost identical. Before we go any further with the video, let's go ahead and take a quick walk around the model. And this model here is the M40A1 recoilless rifle. The M40 series was a 106 millimeter recoilless anti-tank weapon that was also utilized for direct and sometimes indirect fire rolls. This system here is a crew served weapon and was developed in the mid to late 1950s and adopted by the US military in the early 1960s. Both US Army and the US Marine Corps adopted the M40 and the weapon system saw extensive service with both of these branches. The M40 was also widely utilized during the Vietnam War. Towards the mid-1970s, the weapon system was phased out due to the adoption and utilization of the TOW wire-guided anti-tank missile system. The M40s were utilized as a standalone piece, like this unit here, or was also had the ability to be mounted onto a quarter-ton truck such as a M38A1, or also the M151A2C MUT. Even though this system is no longer used by the US military as a mainstay weapon and has been retired for some time, the M40 itself is still widely used throughout the world as it was widely exported as well as even copied by other countries. The reason why the M40 and other systems that are similar to it are still as popular today as they were back in the 50s has to do with the way the system operates. The advantage that the M40 system has is that it is a lightweight system that can be handled by anywhere between one to three men and can deliver a payload that is powerful enough to knock out a main battle tank. The way the system works has to do with the recoilless rifle concept. This system dates back to the late 1940s and basically what the system does is that it can deliver a projectile of sufficient size without the weight required by normal locked breech systems. The way that this is done is that a portion of the shell's combustion is vented directly out of the rear portion of the weapon where it just goes off into the atmosphere. Even though some of the propellant is vented out of the rear, a significant amount of propellant is still in the chamber which forces the shell to go down the barrel and to the target. By utilizing this concept, the design of the weapon system can be made much lighter compared to having a traditional artillery piece which needs very large and heavy shock absorbers and recuperators in order to handle the combustion of the propellant. Another advantage that this system has over other type of systems seen today, namely that of some shoulder fired missile systems, is that those systems tend to be a disposable one time use type system, such as the, the law and the other copies th that were made of it. The M40 is a reloadable system and in addition to being able to be reloaded, there are also different type of shells that are available for this system which custom tailor it to different needs that may arise. Anywhere from anti-tank to high explosive and other rounds in between. Before I continue with the video, let's go ahead and take a step back to when the model was first assembled in order to get a good idea on some of the functions as well as some of the features that have been built into this kit. And here's the model, now fully assembled with all the kit components and is ready for its painting procedure. Now it's important to point out that the model that you see here is the prototype and is going to differ very slightly from that of the actual production units. 
The production units are going to feature one or two little additions as well as some minor tweaks in order to make the model more easily assembled by the end user. However, it's at this point here where you get to see exactly the type of details as well as functionality that is being built into this kit. Starting with the model's tripod, the front wheel that you see here is actually pivotal and it can spin nice and freely. As for the two legs, the legs that you see are just like the real one in that they are actually adjustable in that on the real M40 you can adjust the length and the width of the way the tripod actually sits. This is specifically important for vehicle use as to better fit inside of a Land Rover or even an M151 MUT the the geometry needs to be adjusted. Now this is again as per the real unit. Now another addition has or feature I should say has to do with these little hooks that we have here on either side of the legs on the rear. On the real M40 these hooks are what clip onto vehicles such as the M151A1C which is the vehicle of the version of the MUT which the M40 would be mounted to. If you look on the rear of the the MUT or even the M38 with the recoilless rifle, you'll see that there are these small little blisters that emerge out of the rear portion of the Jeep to which then there's a little clipping point and this unit here will simply latch and lock directly into. Like I just shown, this piece here is fully functional. You just line it up and it will just lock directly in place, close the lever and the piece is secured to its mount. Moving away from the tripod takes us to the Yolk. The Yolk has full range of movement, which includes transverse from left to right, as well as elevate and depress up and down. Now, as you notice, because it's a long, heavy gun, the this version here will tend to droop. This is going to be fixed on this model here with some adhesives and some other tricks. However, one modification I'm going to make to the actual production units is to stiffen up the tolerances in this area here, making it for a nice tighter fit, which will pressure and friction fit it better in place, thus holding it up under its own weight. As for this unit here, you'll see all of the hex head detailing found, and it's laid out in a honeycomb format which is just like on the real M40. You'll also see that of the weld bead detailing which is integrally printed in. Moving on from the weld takes us directly to the data plate. The data plates on and the manufacturing information for the M40 is found on the yolk over here and on this one here it is on this ovular plate. This information that you see here is lifted directly off of a real M40A1 that I was able to find good references for. The real version was made by the Oliver Tractor Corporation, which was also known for making farm equipment as well as also tractors and bulldozers. All that information is found on the data plate that we have here. As you can see, it's a different material compared to the standard 3D material used for the rest of the unit and has to be mounted on by the builder. Just drill two small holes into the unit and the piece simply just drops right on. Moving from the data plate takes us to the area where the two crank wheels would be. Of course, to adjust the transverse and elevation, this would be done via cranks. The two cranks are over here. The smaller crank is for the, the transverse. And the larger crank that I have here is for the elevation. These pieces are very nicely detailed. And if you notice, the back portions have their scallops present, which is present on the real unit. You could also see the scallops added to the the knobs as well. Now on the real M40 for the transverse, this here is a lock and if you push or pull it, the unit will disengage from the gear and you could pivot the unit manually without having to rotate the unit. This is to get a good arc of motion then when you get close to the targeted hand, you engage the the knob to which then you could find finally tune and aim the unit with that of the crank wheel. This is very similar to what you see on something like a mill. As for the larger crank, the knob in the center has nothing to do with the actual elevation depressing. In fact, this is on the real gun that of the trigger. To fire the the Corus rifle, you would push this knob which via solenoid and a cable would connect to the rear portion here of the breech which would then release the firing pin thus firing the round. 
Of course, the wires will be added after the unit is painted and will be supplied with the kit as well. Moving to the yolk, you'll see a small little integrally printed lever. The purpose of this lever has to do with, I believe, switching between firing the spotting rifle, the M2C, or firing the main 106 millimeter round. As both the M2C and the, the main gun are fired by the pressing on the small little knob found in the center of the elevation crank wheel. Moving from the elevation wheel takes us to the rear receiver, which is one complete 3D printing. This simplifies a lot of the production, as well as also the assembly of the model done by the end user. Starting with the front, or I should say the rear tower, this unit here serves two functions. One, it acts as holding up the optic for that of the gunner, and it also is a mount for the mounting of the M2C spotting rifle. On the front portion here is another 3D printed component, and this is the front tower which supports the barrel end of the M2C. Of course, I'll go over that in a little while. As for the barrel, these here are supplied with that of PVC tubing. They are pre-cut and ready for installation by the end user. On the very end, there is a small little elevated section. On the model you see here, this is made from turned PVC. However, on the actual production units, this will be another 3D printing. Moving our way back from the barrel takes us to the opposite side of the yolk. You can see the detailing found on the opposite side, including the little zerk fitting for that of the oil to keep the bearings nice and lubricated. This is also found, by the way, on the opposite side of the main tripod. Moving our way back takes us to this frame here which holds up that of the handles. You'll notice that the pieces are scalloped on the inside. This is as per the real unit. As for the handles themselves, on this model here I have two simple cylindrical versions. From what I've seen on the M40 there were two variants of these handles that were present. You have the simple cylindrical type and then you have the more elaborate spindle type. More likely the spindle type will follow as a different version of this kit in the near future. But for now I have the solid straight cylindrical type carry handles for the model. Moving our way aft takes us to the main breech area of the 106mm M40. Now one feature that I wanted to incorporate into this model was the, the feature of having a functionally opening breech block. To do this, you have to have the detailing present on not only the breech block itself, but also on the interior portion of the breech face. On integral to the 3D printing is that of the, the locking lugs for that of the breech. This is found in these four sections here. As on the real cannon, this is what would actually lock the breech and seal it off in place and also allow the venturi system to line up to vent the expelling gases which would be emitted from the back portion of this weapon when fired. As for the breech block, you'll notice it can fully rotate. This is again for the model and also it's a nice detail feature as the real unit does do this. And the unit is fully hinged. It closes in place to which then you can rotate the unit with the help of a plier or a toothpick or the the lugs are just loose enough with their tolerances that you can simply just pop it directly into place like you see here. The model is designed to be displayed in either a open or closed breech but the, since the feature is the piece is pivotable you could also just have it function as you would if you wanted a piece to be displayed in either way. As for the handle that you see on top on the real M40, you would use this little lever here to open up the breech block. Now unfortunately on the model here this is not functional and when you have the piece displayed either in the open or closed state you must adjust the piece as following. The way you see it here is what the lever would look like when the breech is in the open position and then sealed off like the way you see it here. The lever would be pointing forward as you see it on the model. 
Back to the inner portion here of the breech, you'll notice that there is a groove cut into this section here of the locking lugs. The purpose for this is that on the real M40, this channel is present for that of the clearance of the shell extractor, which is connected to the hinged bar that we have here. On the real M40, you would open up the breech, the extractor would grab the rim of the cartridge, and with the motion of the breech opening, will kick the shell out just enough for the operator then to grab the shell, remove it from the breech in order to put a fresh round into the chamber. The piece does have the extractor present. Unfortunately on the prototype here, I had to remove it in order to make modifications to the geometry in order to have it fit better with the kit. Again, this is going to be present on the production units. As for the breech itself here, you can see in better detail that of the locking lug detailing as well as the inner breech face. Now, it's hard to see because the piece is printed in this clear material, but on the center portion here of the interior breech face, I actually have the firing pin and firing pin retainer detailing present integrally to that of the printing. This will be more visible after the part is painted. Now, like I said earlier, this frame system that we have here is for holding that of the optic. The optic for the M40 is this unit that I have here in my hand. All of the detailing is found on this piece, including the, the front prism lens, the rear angled section with fastener detailing, as well as a small little clamp that holds on to the section that holds on to the eyepiece. Now the eye cup that you see here is actually a separate printing. I'll be getting to that in a second. With the piece removed you can also see the lens section that we have here. Now if we notice this is printed in clear material, the purpose for that is that you would paint around the lenses so that the lenses would be left in their natural coloring which will give you a nice representation of the clear glass which was found on the real optical parts and there's no need to paint it on the section here since it's made in clear material. Now as for the eye cup, the unit that we have here is a 3D printing, however this is not what's going to be included with the production units. The production units are going to feature this exact shape of component, however molded in that of a flexible resin material, which will give a nice detail element as it will replicate that of the rubber used on the eye cups found on the real component. The molds are going to be made with this component here being that of a master. More information on this is to be seen in the completed section of this model video. The last sections to mention are these two locations here. And like I said before, these would be for the M2C 50 caliber spotting rifle. Now, like I said in the M38 Jeep video that I did with the recoilless rifle, the way the M40 would be aimed and used is that you would first aim the rifle with that of the optic. You would then fire a tracer round with the 50 caliber rifle and this would then hit the target to which you would know if the main gun would be on target. If it was, you would then fire the main gun. For the M40 system, this was paired with that of the M2C semi-automatic 50 caliber rifle. The M2C is this unit we have here. It is a magazine fed, gas operated, semi-automatic rifle that fires a specialty 50 caliber cartridge. It is not the same chambering as the standard M2HB or even the M82 Barrett even though the box magazine is very similar in resemblance. The ammunition that was fired by the M2C again were always tracer and the shells were a lot shorter compared to that of your standard M2 ball ammunition. The model that we see here is all fully detailed. You can see all of the detailing on the magazine, including the magazine's floor plate. The receiver detailing has its rigidity ribs, as well as its pin locations, which would hold the fire control group, as well as other fittings found on the inside. We have the magazine paddle release, the section for the fire solenoid, the bolt guide rails, which are held together with large Phillips style screws. It's a little difficult to see on the printing. We have the end cap with the two protective wings. The shell ejection port 
with the charging handle, front trunnion, the gas system with also the gas adjustment regulator, of course we have the barrel, and the barrel end is pre drilled out, it's kind of hard to see, specifically since it's glowing because of the light, like a giant fiber optic, but yeah, it's going to be easier to see once painted. It's drilled out integrally by design, and there's also a small little notch, square notch, printed in the top portion here of the barrel. This is a key and index for that of the front post, and it is again present on the real unit and present on the model. Now to mount the unit in place, on the rear section here, I have these two locking rings, which lock, clamp onto the trunnion of the M2C and keep it nice and snug inside of the mount. Now these two sections here are made from cast resin. However, these are purely tool room prototypes and the actual production units are going to have 3D printed versions of this component that we see here. With the model now fully painted and weathered, you can really appreciate the detailing and the features as opposed to when the pieces were left in their raw 3D printed material. Starting with the model's data plate, here you can see now fully painted the legibility of all of the information that is present on this piece. Moving up from the data plate takes us to the elevation crank wheel. Now the crank wheel itself is the same unit that was showcased earlier. However, the trigger knob and the elevation crank handle are scratch built. These are using my standard mediums for these pieces here. Now the reason for that was that when during construction as well as painting and final assembly, I dropped the crank wheel and the original pieces popped off and were unable to be tracked down. So the new ones were fabricated in place. However, it is important to point out that the crank wheels themselves are going to be slightly improved compared to the one found in the earlier scenes and the production models are going to feature pieces that are going to be more similar to the ones found here. More information on this is to come in a update video for this project. With the unit in hand and fully painted, you could also see the bottom portion here of the spokes that are found on both the elevation and the rotation crank wheels. Like I said before, these features are taken directly off of the real M40 recoilless rifle that I was using for reference. Moving from the elevation crank wheel takes us to the firing cables. Now, like I said before, the M40 recoilless rifle was, would have been able to fire two types of ammunition. You would have to first use the 50 caliber spotting rifle to mark the target, and then once you are sure that the projectile is going to go where you want it, you would then switch to the 106 millimeter and you would fire the main round into the desired target. This was all facilitated by the center knob, which again is the trigger for both of these units. Now, the way everything is triggered is with that of a cable, and you see the cable emerges out from the center portion here of the yolk, which then would make its way into the knob. Now, this is switchable, I believe, from my information, from this lever that we have here on the bottom, if I could get it in focus. This lever here, you would rotate either left and right, and that would switch between 50 caliber spotting and the main 106. The wires, or the cables I should say, emerge from the unit and one of them enters into the rear portion here of the M2C and the other goes along the underside of the recoilless rifle into the carry handle and then would end up into this unit here which is the connecting block for that of the main pivot arm for that of the breech. Now, on the real unit, this would be a type of system where when you would push down on the rod, this would actuate the cable, and the cable would then hit a pin, and this pin would then, with another series of linkages found inside of this bar here, make its way to the center portion of the breech, which would then actuate the firing pin 
releasing the sear and then firing the main gun. Now this cable and linkage system it does sound quite convoluted, however the system itself is actually remarkably very simple and is very reliable. The M40 series is a pr very prolific weapon system and is still used today all around the world. While on the back you could see the Venturi system. Now on the M40 this was done via these four ovular holes which are located around the center portion of the breech. Now if you look closely you'll also see another little seam line where the outer shell of the breech block has its mixed contact with the inner sleeve of the breech block itself. On the real M40 the whole unit would actually thread directly into this larger system here and this would leave for the seam line ring that we have here running along the outer edge. Now fully painted we can see the M2C spotting rifle with all of its detailing. I can keep it in focus. The magazine floor plate has all of its crimp lines present, as well as the little tabs which are used on the magazine body to keep the floor plate in place. And on the muzzle end, we have here the little groove that, like I said before, is found on the real M2C spotting rifles. Here you can see the gas system with the gas block and the bolt carrier detailing, as well as the type of shapes and geometry which are found on this side of the receiver. Moving our way to the model's optic, here you can see the optic also now it's completed state. Have the detailing here on the back. The rubber eye protector has also been fitted. Now since the last scene the molds have been made and the piece is casted in its rubber material. Now the rubber material is naturally black and no painting is required for this piece. You just simply slip it onto the appropriate location. This really helps the accuracy of the piece and gives it for a nice detail element. As for the front portion of the lens you'll notice that the ring is painted in brass. This is as per the real units that I was researching. And you can see now the lenses. Like I said before the pieces are printed in a very clear type of material and when you're painting the optic you simply paint around the lenses for both the one here on the front and the the eyepiece for the side. You simply paint around them leaving their natural material exposed which will then leave for a very realistic type of appearance that you see here which in my opinion is better than if you had the piece mold or printed in a opaque material and you would have to paint the lenses with a gloss black. With this method you have a nice deep rich type color and again it definitely helps the look of the piece compared to printing it in other medias. Like I said before there are two zerk fittings found on the printings. The first one is over here near the yolk and of course this is used to lubricate this section here so that the barrel can elevate. And the second one here is on the front of the tripod. Just like with many of my models, the piece is painted in red, which leaves it for a nice detail element, but is also one that is typically done on the real units as well. And here we have the breech in its open configuration. You can see that I went ahead and painted the chamber area, as well as the muzzle end with that of aluminum paint. The breech block itself, you can see some of the firing pin and striker detailing. This will be more pronounced on the actual production units and of course again more information on that is to follow. And the piece does pivot closed the way you see here. To which then I could then I would need to rotate the block to get it closed. I could also for ease of assembly I could rotate it in the closed state and 
guide it in to the closed position so I can display the model with the breech in the closed state. It's important also to keep in mind the orientation of the lever. When the, on the real recoilless rifle, by rotating this lever here, this would unlock the breech and then pivot the unit open. For the model here, since the piece is not connected, you would have to man manually adjust the lever to which position the breech is going to be displayed at. In the closed state, the lever is pointing forward, and for the open state, you would then rotate the piece 90 degrees. Now, as for the model's paintwork, I've seen these M40s represented in several different ways. Generally, the way I've seen them is with the following format. You have the barrel or the actual rifle portion of the M40, which is left in a parkerized or an all-black type coloring. And then the tripod itself, as well as many of the other components, like the optic, are painted in your standard period olive drab. However, I've also seen variants with the rifle portion painted in olive drab, as well as I've also seen other variants that have the breech block and the inner breech ring left in their steel coloring. Now, like I said before, the model is currently in its final stages of development, and the production units will be offered on the ECA catalog within about a two-week time frame. In addition to the rifles, I also have the ammunition being tooled up and designed as well. All of this is, information is to come in a future upcoming video, so you might want to stay tuned. And with that, that wraps up this product announcement video for the new EastCoastArmory.com 1.6 scale M40A1 recoilless rifle. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook where there are more photographs of this particular, particular unit that have been posted, along with many of the other larger and smaller scale builds that are found on the ECA channel. And in addition to that, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale parts, detail components, and now full kits. Thanks for watching.